Leak detection training, everything you need to know. Well, you may be wondering, how do people learn to use the best leak detection equipment that there is? Who knows? Well, I do. See, I've been trained by two of the best, actually three of the best leak detection people I know. And if you'll stay to the end, well, I'll teach you a couple of things. Number one, why this could be the most important decision you ever make. The second thing, how I got started with a piece of equipment that cost about $11. So first of all, if somebody calls your company or somebody calls you and says, look, I've got a leak. Well, the first thing you need to figure out, is it a sewer leak or is it a water leak? They may just have water coming up under the slab. That's not necessarily an indicator to which it is. And they could just say, well, I've got an extremely high water bill, or maybe the city came by and turned off their water. So when you get out, the first thing you need to do is you need to figure out where is the leak. Now you can do it a couple of ways. The first thing I recommend is just looking at the meter when you pull up. Is the dial spinning? Then go to the house, look at where the water is, look at how the plumbing lays out according to it. Now, I actually got a call one time about a puddle on the floor in a garage. Well, the way the house was plumbed, I told him, this has nothing to do with plumbing. He ended up finding out he had an HVAC system above it that leaked every now and then. Now, I saw the stain on the ceiling, so it was pretty easy to figure out. But knowing right off the bat it wasn't plumbing, I could direct them to someone else. So sewer water leaks, this is also something that I recommend if you're a plumbing company, if you're a plumber, if you're a plumbing company owner, you literally let real estate agents know that you do this. Why is that important? Well, they call it a hydrostatic test. Now, I don't, I call it a sewer water test. Because if I'm representing a buyer, if I'm going out to test a house for a buyer, I wanna test the sewer line, I wanna test the water line, and make sure that they are both holding. Now, there's a lot of people tell you, we don't want you to test the sewer line, you're gonna cause damage. If you do it right, there's no way. Build that relationship with real estate agents because that can introduce you to tons of clients every year that you can help them out in the biggest purchase of their life. Once you're doing leak detection, you've got to know, are you doing water line leak detection or are you doing sewer line leak detection? Leak detection on sewer line, you fill it, you test it. Once it starts leaking down, now you have to go back and isolate it, but that's a whole nother video. But today we're going to talk about water lines. So the very first thing you do, like I said a while ago, start at the meter. If you've got good leak detection equipment, go ahead and put it on, listen to the meter. Is it making any noises? Is the dial turning? Is there any indication that there's a leak? If there's no indication, but they're still getting a high water bill, you may want to put a gauge on the house. That'd have been earlier in the sewer water test. But if you're just out there for a water line leak and you know it, go ahead and put a gauge on the house, turn the meter off and see if that gauge goes down. But when it comes to water line leak detection, start listening right at the meter. So listen at the meter, listen at the double check, and listen at the valve box at the house. Why those three places? Well, you wanna to listen to the meter to see if there's a leak nearby. You wanna listen at the double check because if it's on the irrigation system, believe it or not, I tell my customers, you need to call an irrigation system company. They're gonna be cheaper than me. Then I wanna check at the valve box at the house. Why is that? Well, that separates my system. I've got a yard system and I've got a house system. Once I know where the leak is, it lets me know where to look. If I shut the valve off at the house and the meter keeps spinning, guess what? There's still a leak out here and it's not under the house. Now, if I shut it off and it stops, that tells me somewhere beyond that valve that I shut, there's a leak. Now, if there's a gate valve, I always tell the homeowner, we normally don't close gate valves. I recommend changing that to a full port ball valve. At that point, I will rebuild that valve box. I need to know I can completely isolate the yard service from the house. So let's say it is in the house. What do I do next? Well, at that point, I wanna to go to the water heater. I wanna to listen to the water heater, but I also wanna be able to isolate it. If I can turn off the ball valve there, then I know if it's on my hot or my cold. Same way, go to the washing machine box, put gauges on there, have the system pressurized up, then shut the valve at the water heater. What that's gonna do is, whichever gauge goes down, that's gonna tell you where the leak is. So now I'm gonna go back through everything, I'm gonna turn the water back on, and I'm gonna to go to every angle stop in the house. And what I wanna do, I wanna turn my volume knob down just a little bit. I wanna put the tip on it and go through and listen. That way I can determine noises. When we're doing training at the facility in Palm Springs, we've got an introduction area. And what this is, is literally a water line running down, 
there's valves on it and a line comes out and deadheads and there's leaks in different places. So what we will do is we'll turn on one of the valves, let the plumbers go by and just listen to the valves. Once they tell us which one is leaking the most, which one's making the most noises, then we can tell them, okay, come straight out from there and listen on the concrete. Now when you're listening on the concrete, you wanna turn your volume up. You want it to make enough noise that you can hear it. Because literally, you can take the tip of this, put it down on the ground when you're listening, and you can hear what's going on underneath it. Now we believe in a triple check. How do you triple check everything? First of all, go through and listen, see what valve you hear making noise. Then to double check it, you wanna induce air into the system. Now, one problem is you've got this manifold here with a line coming in and others going out. Now, if it's leaking on one of those lines, you're gonna hear the air, you're gonna hear the water going through that manifold. That's why I tell you, listen to everything in the house. Once we know what line it's on because of the sounds, now we induce air into the system. Now, once you induce air into the system, you wanna keep it at a low pressure, meaning you really only want five to 10, five to 15 pounds of pressure because you're trying to create a boiling noise or rumbling like a jet engine. Now go back and listen to those angle stops again. Double check yourself. Once you figure things like this out, now you can tell the homeowner where they have a leak at. A lot of homeowners will ask themselves, why is my meter spinning? Well, it's spinning because you have a leak and you can come show them that. One thing I like to do is when I turn off a valve at the water heater or at the yard box, if I can make that meter stop spinning and that's what they've told me is, hey, our meter is spinning, I can take them out and show them, look, when I shut this valve, the meter stops spinning. Now they see it, it's very clear in their head that they know where it is. So first of all, listen for water, then listen for air. You're checking and you're double checking. Now one thing that we used to do, and some people still do, is induce helium into the system. Now there are helium detectors out there, but to be honest, if you're on a slab in a house and there's not a crack, you may never get helium up through it. One thing that we like to do, if I think there's a leak between this valve and that valve, we'll cut open the wall and cut open the manifold. That way we know that line drops. At that point, we can give our customers options. And another thing too is when we have that wall open at the manifold, we'll listen to each line on it just to see if we can tell which one is louder. Again, this is with air and this is with water. So when you're on a training system, you start out at one that it makes it really easy. Listen to the valve, listen to the line in front of it. Then we move over to another one. Now we've got a valve box in the corner and we've got multiple valves along the outside wall. Now people go to the valve box, then they come out to the valves and listen to which one's louder. But having the right location equipment can help you too. That way you know where the water lines are under the floor. Once you move along that, again, now induce air, turn your volume up a little bit and start listening along the concrete. You wanna be able to tell people exactly where the leak is. Now the training that we did last week, we had one really good young student. They trained on Friday. They carried all their equipment with them home Saturday morning. Monday morning, they got a call to come out and do a leak detection job. They sold a $14,000 reroute and while they were there, they tested the water and did a whole house water filtration system. That's a $21,000 job off one phone call. What could that do for you and your business? If you own a plumbing company, this is a revenue generator. People are gonna call you, it's work that you don't have to sub out to someone else. This not only makes your phone ring, it also makes your bottom line go up. Now, when I first started, I couldn't afford all this equipment. I couldn't afford the training. Now, I knew how to do it because I had heard about it, I'd studied it, I'd gone out and watched other plumbers do it. I actually went down to Sears. I know, they're not around anymore. I went down to Sears and bought one of those automotive stethoscopes. The kind that go in your ear like a doctor wears, but it's got a long clothes hanger looking wire coming out of the end. I used to go around and listen to meters, valves, and everything with that and that's how I learned to do leak detection. You start out in the beginning, just knowing what valves and what noises you're listening for. Then you move to an advanced area where maybe you don't know where the equipment is, but you can listen all along the concrete, isolate which valve it is. Then you moved into an advanced area where you learned how to do swimming pools and another system where you induce air in through a shower valve and determine which one's leaking and trace that line out and listen along it. If you're interested in growing your bottom line, I highly recommend learning how to do leak detection the right way and getting training on the best leak detection equipment. If you got something out of this or if this is something you think 
would never work in your area, do me a favor and leave me a comment down below because I'm telling you, this can change your business. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, helping you make more money in the trades.